Okay, so this is my project. I did battery battle. My question was about was which brand of battery would last the longest while playing Wii. I used two different brands of batteries. I used Energi Energizer and Rayovac. And my hypothesis was that I thought Energizer was gonna last longer than uh, Rayovac. My experiment supplies were one set of both brands of batteries, a uh, Wii console, two Wii remotes, a Wii game to test the batteries, and a television. My procedure was I wanted to buy two different brands of batteries, Energizer and Rayovac. Then I will prepare the batteries by inserting them into the Wii remote. And then I will pick a game to play so I can measure the batteries. Then I'll play till the batteries run out. And then, I will, then I'll record the data and repeat the, the procedure with the other brand of batteries. My results was I was surprised to see that my hypothesis was correct because Energizer lasted the longest. Like my, this is my graph. This is the time in hours. This is Energizer, and this is Rayovac, and this is the time in hours. And uh, my conclusion was Energizer lasted the longest. My application was that with my results, I know now to buy Energizer. I did Yummy Crystals, and it's about uh, making, seeing, uh, well, impurities, uh, does, do impurities uh, change how making crystals with sugar? Like, or how to make a saturated solution? I learned that, um, I learned that rock candy is actually a collection of large crystals that are grown from sugar water. Hi, my name's Noah Sash, I'm grade four. For my, um, for my science fair experiment, I did paper towel science. Um, the reason I chose to do this project was because our family uses a lot of paper towels and I wanted to know which paper towel brand was the best. And I thought that um, absorbency and strength make a paper towel best. So I'll, I decided to use those two for my test. My hypothesis uh, was that Bounty would be the best because I've seen Bounty on a lot of paper towel commercials and stuff and uh, I did a paper towel survey and um, most people chose Bounty was the best and the reason I chose those um, these four brands uh, Bounty, Viva and Generic was because the, um, they were the top votes and generic, there are a lot of generic, so I chose to do a cheap generic, which is this one, and I chose to do a uh, great value generic, which is this one. Um, and so I, um, for my experiment, I took two, tu um, two but I put I took a tub and put it right there, and I took two cardboard boxes and put them eight inches apart, and I put a tin foil, two tin foil pans on top, and then I put a paper towel in the middle and two weights on top, and then in the back I put two weights to hold it down, and I poured one half a cup of water on, and then I pour, let it drain into the tub underneath it, and then I poured 75 marbles on. Um, and waited to see how long it lasted. And if it lasted for one hour, then I poured another 10 marbles on, so that'd be 85 marbles on top. And then if it lasted to an hour and five minutes, then I pour another 10, which would be 95 marbles on top. And if it lasted to an hour and 10 minutes, then I um, said that it would probably last forever because I actually left one overnight and it stayed there for the entire night and the water evaporated, so I didn't see how long it could last because it would just last forever. And so then for my absorbency experiment, I took, um, I took a measuring cup right here and I poured 200 milliliters of water into it. I took the, a paper towel, I folded it four times so it looked like a square and then I put it inside of that and waited for 90 seconds and then I took it out and disposed of it. And then I 
took the measuring cup and poured the water left into a graduated measuring cylinder right there and measured how many milliliters of water left. And I did this three times for each paper towel brand and I actually, for the strength test, I did it three times for each paper towel brand too. And for um, my test, my strength test, um, the cheap paper towel generic broke right away, but um, all the other paper towel brands or um, all the other paper towel brands lasted for as long as they could. So I said that they all won for that one. And then for the absorbency test down right here, Viva had an average of um, absorbing 140 milliliters of water and it and it, um, and that was three more than Bounty, so it won um, for the paper towel experiment. And my conclusion was that Viva is the best paper towel, it, uh, so I would suggest buying Viva paper towels. And my future directions to make this experiment better, and uh, I would try using different paper towel brands, and I put the marbles in a cup so that they'd all stay in the same place when I poured them on top, instead of them going into different places when I poured them on top. Quarter pie, I'm Leah. And I'm Mackenzie. And our question for us, which is, the smell and age effect taste. Our hypothesis was that when you are younger and have your nose unplugged, you will have Um, statement of purpose. I chose to do this project because la um, this fall there was a huge rainstorm that caused a lot of property damage and flooding. So I researched levees, dams, and channelization. Hypothesis. I think the dam will work best because the, it will it'll hold back the water and not let it flood downstream. Research. I found out the three most common ways to prevent flooding are levees, dams, and channelization. Levees are basically always Levees are basically a way of raising a river's banks um, using sand, using sand bags, cement, or other materials. A dam is basically a wall that blocks water from flowing, and channel channelization is widening and deepening the river with heavy machinery. No. Procedure. First, I filled a bin with dirt and used a marked can to dig a simulated river. Place 10 two by two Legos on the river bank to simulate houses and pour, poured a gallon of water into the river 
or to simulate a flood, I counted the, how many houses that, that the water reached. In, in this case, all of them are flooded. Next, after cleaning up, I built two levees out of clay, placed them on the sides of the river, or poured a gallon of, count, poured a gallon of water into the river, and counted the number of houses that wound up flooding. Then I built a dam out of Legos, placed in the river about one fourth of the way of the distance from the end of the bin, poured a gallon of water into the river, and again counted the number of houses that wound up flooding. Finally, I used a larger can to dig out the river a little more, poured a gallon of water in, and counted the number of houses that were flooded. Observations and results. With no flood prevention measures, all of the houses flooded. With the levees, five houses flooded. With the channelization, two houses flooded. The dam test resulted in zero houses flooding. I was amazed at how effective it was, and, and it seemed to strongly support my hypothesis. Conclusion. All, of, all three methods of prevention were at least somewhat effective. Since all, of, since all three resulted in at least some of the houses not being flooded, the, the, the me first method of prevention levies was the least effective, which surprised me. If I were to do this experiment again, I would try bo making both the levies taller and keeping them a consistent height. The second method, the dam, was the, mo was the most effective. I was amazed at this result since none of the houses were flooded and there was room to spare. I could see how a dam could be dangerous if it were to fail. At the end of my test with the dam, I pulled it out to see what, what would happen to the houses downstream and, and they not only flooded, but they, but they floated away. Okay. The third method was channelization. This was the second most effective method, which, which makes sense because all I did was enlarge the riverbed, great, <laughs> uh, enlarge the riverbed, which meant there was more room in the river to hold the water. If it, I were to do this again, I would, try even, I would try using an even larger can to dig it out, although I would need a bigger bin, deeper bin. In, in doing this experiment, I learned that dams can be very effective if used in the correct situation. If you want the river to continue flowing without interruption, then, that, then they aren't an option. Levees can work well, though, even though mine weren't as effective. And they are mostly useful in situations where, where, all, where all that is really needed is to enlarge the riverbed, uh, riverbanks for a temporary flood prevention method. Channelization, while the, the most effective of more effective than levees, if, levees also cost a lot more. And so uh, it is not a good of an option most of the time. I enjoyed this experiment and it was very fun since I got to play with Legos and mud and learn about learned a lot about flooding and flood prevention. Project Boom Boom Splash. The problem was how different sodas compare when you put Mentos in them. And questions. What type of sodas do we use? How many Mentos do we use? Hypothesis. I think root beer will be the highest because it feels bubbly in your mouth. Predator. Gather two liter bottles of soda, Diet Coke, Coke, and W root beer, Sprite. Two, two. Quickly add seven Mentos and watch how the, it, high it goes. Minerals, Mentos, Diet Coke, Coke, Sprite, root beer, packs of Mentos, well, two packs of Mentos, a driveway, a tape measure, and that's all. My data, Diet Coke, 24 inches went up. Coke went 22 inches, Sprite went 18 inches, Root Beer went 13 inches, Diet Coke had the highest fountain, followed closely by the regular Coke, Sprite trailed behind 6 inches. Conclusions. My data did not support my hypothesis. Three Mentos did not 
make it into the root beer. I wonder if co cola colas are different. But physics asked.